In this video, we're going to take a look at the use of the Rails um, database console. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at uh, the use of the Postgres console to take a look at things like you know the tables or the databases that are part of the application, um, the tables and so forth. If uh, you're in the course, we've been developing this uh, this simple Rails application, and thus far, um, it kind of looks like this. Uh, yours might differ a little bit. Um, got this ability to do things like log in and log out of the application. Uh, let me go ahead and just log in here. And when I do log in, I have uh, uh, some pages that are one page that's protected by the uh, the application another one that is uh, is visible all the time you also have um, account information that um, can be um, modified and cancel account and this is all basically support from device uh, but we've now built that into our application things have been styled a little bit with uh, with bootstrap so what I want to do now is I want to take a look at uh, and uh, be able to examine the database that is behind all of this, uh, especially uh, when we're trying to debug an application and we want to take a look at um, you know, maybe the definition of the database that was created without having to try to deduce all of that from, um, from all of the migration files that are part of the application. So if you're in Cloud9, um, or actually it doesn't matter if it's Cloud9 or not, if you're, uh, if you're in a Rails environment, um, you can type Rails DB, and you have to do this in the application directory, um, your development directory. What this will do is this will fire up the Rails console, and of course you have to provide your, your password. Uh, and so now what I'm in a uh, PostgreSQL um, console, if I were attached to a different database, say MySQL or SQLite, um, I would start up that, the disk command would start up that database. So once I'm in this uh, environment, there's a number of things. And, and actually, let me go ahead and type help, and it shows you the different commands, um, or at least a trailhead to the commands that you can execute. Um, I think the one that is probably useful um, from the standpoint of navigation in Postgres um, would be the question mark uh, command. And so a number of things here that can be done. There's a couple of commands here, um, being able to get information about the tables that um, you're currently connected to. Um, there's uh, a command that I, that uh, we you would want to use to be able to connect to a specific database that um, um, that is part of your application. Um, there's another one here, this backslash l, which is basically list all the databases that are that are um, being currently uh, um, managed by Postgres. So I can hit Q to get out of that. And I'm going to list the databases. So we saw there that it was backslash L. This shows me all the databases that have been um, created as part of um, the current man, um, Postgres um, database management system that I'm using uh, in, this, uh, in this Ubuntu installation. Um, it previously had been create, working off of one called Demo. The one that I've been using of late is, is this Rails app um, uh, database. So I'm going to connect to this database, this Rails app development database, by using the backslash C and type Rails app development. And so now I'm connected to Rails app development. I think I was connected to it before, actually, um, based on what I was seeing there. Actually, let's 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 change that. Let me connect to demo development. 
And so now I'm connected to uh, demo development. I, I actually don't know which tables have been created as part of this. I don't know if any have been. So I'm going to use the dash D command, which will tell me all the tables that have been created. And so there it is. There's a, those are tables that were created as part of this um, application. But I actually want to work off of the, the other one, the uh, Rails app development. I'm going to go to that and sound back to that. And then I'm going to list the tables there, again with backslash D. And so you'll see I've got a number of, of tables that have been created. Um, some of them automatically, some of them as part of migrations or, or uh, um, models that I've created, so evaluations, products, professors, users. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically what I've got to work with there with, uh, with my database. Now, <clears throat> uh, there's a couple of ways of being able to see what the, uh, what the uh, the attributes or the, the columns are for database um, and I find the easiest way to do that is just to do a um, do a select all um, which when you have a lot of rows in the database that may be um, a little bit uh, uh, a little unwieldy um, you could also do um, uh, you could take a look at uh, SQL commands that will show you how to um, pull those, uh, display the schema, but I, I typically will just do a select. So I'm going to do a select all from users. And yes, like I said, that can get to be a little unwieldy because of all the information that's there. Um, but, you know, I do see up here, these are all the different columns. Um, and then few of the rows that show the, the data that's been saved. Um, and this actually corresponds to the account information. Uh, if I look up John Doe, for instance, um, there's John Doe's information, and probably all of that is similar. Actually, let's, let's change what we actually select to make it a little easier. Uh, I'm going to select ID, email, First name, I think it's first name, last name, from users. So there's the ID. And actually, I can even, let me expand that a little bit. And uh, let's also do T number. Uh, let's see if I can find what the actual name would be. It's T underscore number. So let's add that. Number. Okay, so there's uh, there's the information that's currently stored in the database around that particular user. When we go into our next um, part of uh, this series here, uh, I want to use this ID as something that uh, we'll use for for attaching ownership of other objects, other models um, to particular users. Um, so we'll see that uh, in a future uh, a future video. So anyway, there's a lot that we can do here. And actually, let me type help. Uh, um, certainly a lot of different SQL commands that you can execute uh, within this environment. Uh, if you do a backslash H, it'll show you all of the different things that you can do. Uh, probably the ones that are most useful for... Uh, for your purposes is to use the select command um, uh, which will allow you to, um, to view various things about, uh, about different tables. Um, when you start to get in, into this environment and start to make other modifications, um, I would say that's probably, uh, uh, probably not desired. You probably want to make modifications from within Rails uh, but doing migrations and whatnot, you really want to use this environment to, to do exploration. Um, so more of a, a read type of, of operation rather than doing both read and modification. Uh, I think you can get, that can get to be a little bit risky. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to show here. Um, 
in a future uh, future video, we're going to look at uh, uh, looking at uh, queries from within Rails to access the things that are contained in these databases. Anyway, that concludes this video.